you may be familiar with the trace of a matrix. It is the sum of the elements on the diagonal. But now we want to define the trace of a tensor without relying on its matrix representation. How are we going to do this? That is what you will see in this video. Uh, furthermore, we will see that our definition will indeed yield a familiar expression from linear algebra. So let us have a look. Again, the definition may le look a bit odd. The trace of a tensor T, denoted by trace T, satisfies the two following properties, which already defines what the trace is, linearity. So if you have alpha s plus t, some tensor, then the trace should be linear, so it should be e equal to alpha times trace s plus trace t. And the trace is defined for the dyadic product, the trace of ab, dyadic product ab, as given by a and a product b. That does not look at all like the trace you know from linear algebra. But let us take a look to see whether this indeed yields the same. Uh, uh, first of all, we will show that, that the trace of T is indeed equal to the sum of the elements of the matrix on the diagonal, TII. How are we going to do that? That is what you want, of course, because this is what we know from linear algebra. For the trace of T, we have seen that we can uh, uh, write uh, a tensor T in terms of, say, basis tensors, EI, EJ. We've seen that we can rewrite it as T IJ times uh, EI EJ, where EI EJ is a dyadic product between EI and EJ. Then we use the linearity, which means that we can take the TIJ in front. Uh, so we're left with the TIJ times the trace of EI EJ. And now uh, we use the definition over here. The trace of the dyadic product is the inner product between A and B, so the inner product between EI and EJ, which is just delta IJ. And then we can perform the sum TIJ summed uh, over J, for example, uh, gives us a TII. So there we are. Indeed, the uh, trace uh, of a, a tensor yields the sum of the uh, elements of its matrix representation on the diagonal. Second consequence, you already see if you take the transpose, nothing happens. So the trace of T transpose equals the trace of T. Um, then something special, trace of A times B equals the trace of B times A. And it's not so trivial because you know from matrix multiplication that A times B is in general not the same as B times A. However, their traces are the same. We'll show that in this example. We said C equals A. A times B. Uh, then we can write the uh, component CIJ as AIM BMJ, just a, a normal matrix product. And then we can compute the trace of C. Trace of C equals CII. So you have to set J equals to I. So putting J equals to I gives you AIM BMI. So that's the trace of C equals AB. Now we're going to do the same trick for D equals B times A. And uh, we have to show, of course, that those two are equal. So now we said D equals B times A. So I, D, I, J are elements are given by the matrix product B times A. So B, I, N times A and J over here. So for the trace of D, we again have to set G equals to A. So that's what we do over here. Set the G equal uh, to, uh, to I. You get the D, I, I equals B, I, N, A and I. And of course, we can invert the order now because the B, I, N and the A and I, now they are just numbers. So we can put them the other way around. Now we can rename indices because we are summing over both the N and the I. So we can rename the N to I and the I to M. That's what we do over here. Then we get A, I, M, B, M, I. And we see that this is indeed exactly equal to the trace of C. So now we, uh, we see that indeed the trace of A times B equals the trace of B times A. So the trace uh, for a tensor satisfies the same properties we know from linear algebra.